Well, to be honest, I'm actually not quite sure how I feel about this game. Initially, I was feeling great. I even said in the live chat in the third quarter, this is exactly the type of game that the Bulls needed. The energy was there. Guys were playing smart basketball. The defensive intensity had finally picked up. And to be honest, a lot of that was because Javante Green and the energy he was able to instill across the roster. Like right away, you were seeing the hustle and fire coming out of him that the Bulls fed off of. Obviously, having Zach Levine was a massive help, especially since he wasn't expected to be back until the next game. But uh, what the hell happened in the second half? And really, I should say the back half of the third quarter and fourth quarter, because for a minute there, it looked like the Bulls were going to blow the thunder out of the water when they opened up the game in the third quarter. Anyway, I should say 84 to 55, I believe was the lead. I almost thought about starting to put my post game video together because this one looked all but over. And then all of a sudden, the Thunder went on a tear to where they initially went on a 19-3 run to end the third. Then the Bulls extended the lead a bit and actually were ahead by as many as 15 points near the five-minute mark of the fourth quarter. And the Bulls just completely got cold and could not hit a shot. And to make matters worse, their defense fell apart with empty possessions leading to easy buckets for the Thunder. I was in absolute disbelief. When the Thunder cut the lead to one point with a few seconds left in the game. I really thought the Bulls were going to blow this one. I truly did. Like, despite the fact that they had the ball with less than 20 seconds to go and a one-point lead, all signs and momentum were pointing towards the Thunder. And man, that would have been a devastating loss if the Bulls didn't pull through. But thankfully, Levine hit those free throws and Shade Gilgis Alexander missed that tying three that really looked like it was going to go down. And the Bulls narrowly walked away with the win. So what's going on, everyone? You're listening to Bulls Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Now, first, let me just start by saying that having Zach Levine back was a huge win for the Bulls. Like, I don't want people to take away what I'm about to say as if Zach was the problem tonight and why the Thunder came back, because it's not the case. Really, the whole team allowed for that to happen. I think some of it is also on coaching and Billy Donovan's rotations to not recognize the change in play from the Thunder once they started going on that run. Zach did a lot tonight, and you can't expect him to just go off on his first game back after being out for a while. Like, I almost expected Zach to kind of have an off night for him shooting anyway. He finished the game shooting 6 for 19 and 3 for 10 from 3, 23 points in total, which was great. The Bulls absolutely needed his offense, and he did a great job at getting to the line with DeRozan being out, who is the specialist in that department. But I think what I was a little more disappointed with was his decision-making down the stretch. Like, Zach Levine as a player, has matured and grown tremendously since first joining the Bulls. Obviously, right? The dude has gotten better every year, and this season, he has shown more maturity playing alongside DeMar DeRozan. But every now and then, we see these flashbacks of the old Zach Levine, where he gets tunnel vision and sets up these isolation plays without getting anybody involved and forcing bad shots that often end up in a miss, or he'll drive too hard to the basket, hoping for a foul, doesn't get it called, and complains to the refs before getting back on defense. Like, you have to be smarter than that to close out a game in the clutch. Again, I'm not saying Zach does this all the time. In fact, these are more rare occurrences this season than anything. But they occasionally show up. And obviously, some of that is probably because DeRozan wasn't in the lineup, so Levine felt that he needed to take over. But still, that's not how you're going to win a basketball game by not setting up a play and doing step-back threes with a man in your face when the opposing team is going on a run. Kobe White, same thing. You had him making the same type of plays down the stretch. He did hit a very big three towards the end of the game that was incredibly clutch, but similar with Kobe, just some all-around bad shot selection. Kobe, again, very cold shooting tonight. Again, struggling shooting from three. He was one for six from three, which now makes that two for 22 from behind the arc in his last three games, less than 10%. It's just a few games, and hopefully Kobe can get it going, but man, do the Bulls need his offense right now while they're shorthanded. Kobe did have seven rebounds and seven assists tonight, though, which was a big help off the bench. Kobe did come off the bench, though. I think it was the right call by Billy Donovan to start Io DeSumo over Kobe, and it showed with how well Io played tonight. Io has been a little quiet the past few games, and to see him start off the game going 9 for 9, getting in the passing lanes for deflections, finding the open man down low, dude was everywhere tonight and had arguably the best game of his young career thus far he finished the game with 24 points on 10 for 14 shooting four for six from three five rebounds and eight assists the kid continues to make a case for himself to be a member of the all-rookie team and hopefully in the rising stars challenge as well 
And then how about Vucevic? This was the kind of game we needed to see from Vuce after having an abysmal outing last night in Orlando that I would personally consider to be his worst game of the season. I mentioned it in the weekly preview video from earlier this morning. Vucevic must have a big game against a smaller, less talented front court that the Thunder have. And he did that tonight in a big way, providing not only offense with a team high 26 points on 10 for 18 shooting, finally started hitting some threes too, and 15 rebounds, five offensive rebounds alone, but he was also more engaged and active on defense. He finished the game with three blocks and a steal as well. And as I mentioned before, you have to be happy with the level of energy and hustle for which Javante Green brought to this team coming in after being out for nearly a month and didn't really seem to miss a beat at all was doing all the little things we saw him do before hustling on every possession in the limited minutes that he was able to play and how about that incredible dunk that he had in the first half i miss the shy slammer jamma uh, coming from Stacey King with all of these top dunkers being out right now, but that was an incredible throwdown. And of course, Javante had that rebound that sealed the deal off of that SGA miss. Uh, Green played 25 minutes due to minutes restrictions, but um, these were very impactful minutes for which the Bulls likely don't leave tonight with a win if they did not have Javante Green in the lineup. What was great to see from the Bulls was the much improved ball movement, especially in the first half. The Bulls finished the game with 31 assists after putting 10 assists in total against the Magic last night when passing and facilitating was simply non-existent in that game. That's why I was pretty annoyed at how the Bulls showed out in the fourth quarter because that incredible passing went out the window, which is what got them that massive lead in the first place. It's like they forgot how to play well together and guys just started playing for themselves. Far too many turnovers for the Bulls tonight as well, that's for sure, which I believe they had seven turnovers in the fourth quarter alone, while the Thunder, a young team that hasn't taken care of the ball well this season, they only turned the ball over 11 times in total. Also, SGA, man. That dude is a great player and is a future star in this league, no doubt about that. Anyway, so not the best game for the Bulls, given they allowed one of the worst teams in the league to come back and nearly beat them after having a near 30-point lead halfway through the third quarter. But at the same time, the Bulls were without DeRozan, Lonzo Ball, Alex Caruso, and Derek Jones Jr. And it was the second game of a back-to-back, -back, a traveling back-to-back. -back. So I'm sure fatigue set in a little there at the end. But the Bulls are off tomorrow, and then they'll be right back at it on Wednesday, back at the United Center to face the Raptors. Until then, guys, be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan, as I do post daily Bulls content. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.